So today I'm joined by Niels van Hunderdal. The person with one of the most difficult surnames. <laughs> <laughs> Niels is Olympian 2016, European champion in the team sprint yep. 2015, yeah. runner up at the World Championships 2016 and 17, yeah. and world champion 2018. Right yeah. Welcome, Niels. Thank you. Niels, what was your darkest moment? Um, uh, yeah, it was a little bit of a hard question, but uh, I think uh, London 2016, the Olympic Games, and yeah, we really thought like we were uh, able to make the podium there, uh, maybe uh, achieve, yeah, um, win gold. Um, yeah, but we didn't even come close, and we didn't even come close to our normal times like we did in the season before. So we were like uh, half a second away um, from our normal times and almost like a second away uh, from the winners. So that was a really dark moment um, and it actually took, took a while like when we all uh, uh, recovered from it. Like we didn't know because uh, we felt really good in training. Uh, but on the yeah on the competition itself it didn't work out and um, we all thought we were good to maybe achieve gold and then it was like a bummer. Yeah. <coughs> um, so yeah, I think it was my darkest moment. What did you learn from that moment? Um, yeah, from now on I know I can come back from it. So I, I thought from that moment I thought like, well, I will never be able to start faster than this because yeah, I was pretty good now and uh, I, w I was I was actually afraid to ride competition again because I thought I was I was feeling good, but then yeah, I, uh, it, times weren't that fast and uh, but now like uh, this almost two and a half years later and now I know like. I achieved some goals again and I brought some competition. So, uh, yeah, what I learned from it is that I uh, yeah, can be better than I was there. And um, yeah, it was a dark moment, but yeah, you can always be, uh, step it up and be better than that. You can always come back. Yeah. yeah. Okay. What was your best moment? Yeah, that's a little while ago. Of, uh, like, what is it? Like three months ago, I think. March. Yeah, uh, yeah, the, the world uh, being world champion, and also for me in a very fast first lap, um, and yeah, that was my best moment, I think. <laughs> yeah, that was a great yeah. moment. What did you learn from that moment? Um, yeah, I didn't think I was able to ride that fast. It was a 17.0, and normally I would ride a 17.4. Uh, my fastest is 17.3, so it's just three of a three, what, what do you say it? Yeah, of a second, uh, three hundredths of a second uh, faster. And it looks like a little bit, little margin, but it's like way faster. Um, and yeah. Well, it's tenth of a second, but anyway. It's, yeah, it's, it's, yeah it's three tenths of a second. Clear of yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Three tenths of a second, yeah. Um, so yeah, that was my yeah, biggest. Hmm. Cool. If you could go back in time, 10, 15 years ago, what advice would you give your younger you? Mm, actually, that everything is possible, because I always thought I wasn't able to, uh, yeah, to, like the level of where I am now, like being in the Olympic program of track cycling, uh, being world champion at the moment. So, yeah, uh, I always thought it wasn't possible. I did it for fun and everything came step by step. And now I know like I can achieve this and be one of the fastest starters of the world. Yeah. So uh, like in that time I would say believe in yourself, do your own thing and uh, train with other people. Like maybe training in a group makes you really strong. I think. Hmm. I've written down a question for later, but it fits in very well now with what you just said. I mean, I'm working with you for six years now mm -hmm. and when you were younger, you didn't always have your priorities sorted out. Mm -hmm. When did you realize you can be one of the best in the world? Or even mm. the best in the world? I mean, you came close now. Yeah. 
I mean, close also in starting time, right? Uh -huh. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. world champion is being the best, but yeah. also if you look at the starting time, time yeah. you are there. Um, like, you mean like when, when I, yeah. Was there a specific moment or? Anything? Actually on the day itself, like then I knew like, okay, I can be really fast. And I was feeling really, really strong that day. Uh, and I did make a false start in the, in the second, uh, second time like we have qualification our final final and in the half final i uh, had a, a miss start and, uh, and and then i thought like oh shit i need to focus uh, not be uh, because i was too too quick uh, but then i thought like okay i'm really strong i can i can even manage to be a little bit later out of the machine and still ride fast so uh, yeah just the confidence of being mm -hmm. feeling so strong and then yeah, I, I was a lot later with the start. Mm. I did like uh, only one tenth slower than I did before. Uh, then I, so it was 17.24 and in the qualification at 1.9. So it was a little bit slower, but just the feeling of being feeling so strong was like, okay, I don't care what happens. I can just do whatever I want and we, we, will, we will still be in the final. So. Yeah. And um, if you look at your career as an athlete, so I mean, we started working six, seven years ago mm -hmm. with you and your athlete and, you know, kind of a lot of things in your head and mm -hmm. not always focus on training. Mm -hmm. When did that switch come that you think you can be good and you... Because um, I remember working towards the Rio Olympics, you yeah. were quite focused and dedicated. Mm -hmm. So somewhere bet between 2012 when we started and yeah. 2016, there must have been a change in you. Yeah, I think it's when we when we became a re European champions. That season was pretty good for me because it was the first competition of the season. Uh, after that, we rode some World Cups, uh, and I was also going pretty fast and uh, even faster than I was going on the. European Championships and from that time on I was being really focused with training because I, kn I knew like uh, I can be faster, I feel like I can be faster and uh, I just need to be get stronger in the gym uh, especially. So that was, uh, yeah, I was really focusing on being strong in the gym and um, getting some bigger plays on the bike so you have to work harder on the bikes mm -hmm. because that's a really specific uh, strength training if you do it on the bike. Uh, so yeah, from I think from end 2015, I was really focusing to train, uh, train really hard, and I, I also because I knew I can be better than this. So yeah. started tasting the blood. Yeah. <laughs> what are the habits that make you a successful athlete or person? Um, yeah, I I don't really have some habits, but uh, yeah, I'm I, I feel like I'm a really normal person. Uh, competing at a high level, uh, I, don't, I don't really feel like I'm a, I'm a real athlete, like being F always on time or uh, have the same routine every day or something. I, yeah, I, I just feel like I'm a really normal person, just doing uh, yeah on high level training. Okay. Yeah. Do you have a morning routine? Um, yeah, not really. Like I I, I wake up all. Most of the time, like one hour, one and a half hour before the training starts. Uh, and then have coffee, always have coffee. Uh, then go to the toilet. <laughs> and then uh, yeah, have a little, little breakfast because I can't, I can't really eat much in the morning. Um, and I tried uh, uh, half out. I don't know what it's called in English. Oat, 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 uh, oatmeal. Oatmeal, yeah, I'm sorry. Oatmeal in the morning, uh, but I didn't. Yeah, I couldn't really. Uh, yeah, go with it. So I just eat uh, bread with um, chicken fillet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and cheese, and then that's all I really eat in the morning. Okay. Yeah. But on competition days, it's kind of different because then you're also like nervous, and I don't. Yeah, I drink a little bit more coffee uh, just to be awake and to have the system going. Uh, but I can't, yeah, on, especially in those days, uh, days I can't really eat and that's, but then I know like I, I've, uh, because I have now six years of uh, um, yeah, competition uh, skills, like uh, erfaring, yeah, experience, uh, experience. Uh, I know, yeah, you, you don't really have to eat a lot on the competition day, you're already strong, you did your training 
and if you don't get the your uh, breakfast in in the morning it's not like really uh, bad for you yeah so you compete on an empty stomach sometimes yeah like nah, not completely empty but like a little bit empty not yeah Coffee. because i want to, yeah i want to get li- i will also want to be light and yeah. have not too much uh, weight on me then on that day so i can relate to that also yeah. i like that feeling of yeah. not having eaten mm-hmm. if you do something also if you want to concentrate on work yeah. or something i like yeah. to be on an empty stomach yeah with coffee <laughs> <laughs> how do you prepare yourself for important moments um Sometimes I look back to some videos, uh, what I did before, because I always do like the the, the, the start position, uh, the only team sprint. So one lap and you can't really make a fault in that lap because then it's like, yeah, you're done. Uh, so I try to get my timing right. Uh, uh, let's just rephrase that <coughs> for the people who are watching. You can't make a fault means... You should not do it because the team suffers. Yeah, you can clearly well. make mistakes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah, not that course. it's impossible to yeah. make a mistake. So yeah, but then every time, yeah, everyone. If you make a mistake, yeah. two other people are suffering. Yeah, so yeah. you should be getting it right. Yeah, and just the yeah. timing needs to be exactly on point. And yeah. so that's what I'm, uh, yeah, like counting from five back to zero and um, watching back some videos just to see the movement and yeah. Not, not really much more, I think. Hmm. Uh. Okay. And we also touched on that before during the World Championships. I mean, you, you set three new PBs. Mm-hmm. And actually the best PB, the fastest time when it was counting most in the final. Yeah. yeah, yeah. How did you do that? <laughs> um, yeah, like the first one was uh, really out of the blue. Like it was um, 17.19. Uh, and that was also already my fastest ever, uh, and that 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 particular lap didn't feel really good. So I, I felt like a lot of nerves, and uh, I, I I knew what to do, but I felt a lot of nerves, and so that was a really fast lap. And then I thought like, wow, I can get we I can be way faster than this. Uh, then the second one was uh, the, the the miss start, so I was a little bit slow in that one. And in the last one, it was just like, okay, everything, just get it on point. I've been doing starts like a lot in training, in competition. So just focus and uh, get the quickest time out of it and let's be world champion. And that's what happened. How do you overcome setbacks when things don't go your way? So you said, for example, <coughs> after London, uh, London uh, after Rio Olympics mm-hmm. was a dark moment. And yeah. How did you come back from that? Um, that actually took a a while um, because yeah I didn't know like if I wanted to go further uh, in track cycling um, then I did I did I uh, trained uh, but the first trainings like the, the whole season of training was not like really on point some training were like really focused and do your thing and on the next day you wake up and you think like oh fuck this I don't I don't want to uh, but yeah still doing training but you really have to be yeah need to be focused on your training, know what you're doing and uh, that was kind of hard to get it back. Uh, then How we did had you do it? <coughs> um, I think the last season I didn't compete at the uh, Europeans because I wasn't good enough back then. Uh, so another team was going from the Netherlands. Uh, and then I was really focusing to at least ride the first two World Cups and they let me so uh, then I could yeah, uh, let them see like how fast I was at the moment. Um, I did like 17.4s all the time, one time 17.5 so it was like the when I, how I was feeling back then I was doing uh, way better than they expected so that was pretty good. Uh, but after that, I thought like, okay, we have the world championship in our own own, own country. Uh, I just want to be there, and I want to be world champion now because we yeah we were second two times before. Uh, so I think for three months, three and a half months, I really, really, really focused on every day what I did, eating, uh, training, and yeah, 
like everything all around it mm. and that really helped me so for me I know like if I focus for three months <laughs> I can be there that's not really true but yeah there's a lot of training before that uh, of course but yeah like for me it was really three three and a half months really really focusing on it mm. and not riding any competition only training and uh, yeah do your thing cool Who's your role model and why? Mm, I do not really have a role model. Um, yeah, it's not. Yeah, I don't really want to be like someone else. Or, uh, but I do respect some athletes. Like, of, like, uh, like uh, when I see them doing their thing, it's like really cool. Uh, especially Peter Sagan in the the road rider. He's world champion as well on the road. Uh, he's world champ. Uh, he's world champion now uh, and like also now he's, he's winning a lot of races and not a lot of world champions are also winning races when they're world champion mm -hmm. so uh, yeah he's like a very cool person okay. <laughs> yeah. what is the best advice you have received and who gave it to you um, I think that's from my former coach and he said to me you're not doing it for me you're doing it for yourself And that's just, that's one thing like you always think about when you're training. You think like, oh, are they watching? Uh, no, okay, I can do a little bit lighter. And but then you think like, oh, I'm just I'm doing it for myself. Like they don't care what I do. Like I want to be the best and not them. So and I always think like, okay, do it for yourself. Train hard and do your thing. Was that René? That was René. Okay. Yeah. How does a typical training day look like? Mm, most of the time we were, we train on at 9.30, so I wake up at 8 o'clock most of the time. Um, do our training, most of the time it's during two to three hours, depends if it's like weight training or uh, track training. And then we have rest, um, maybe most of the time we cook an egg in the, in the afternoon or like in the, uh, for lunch. <clears throat> and then we train again at three o'clock or four uh, o'clock, um, and then after that we eat dinner, lay on the bed and go to sleep later. Chill out. Yeah. Recovery. Yeah. Do you want to nominate someone to be interviewed? I don't really know someone else. Like I, I don't know if Nikima has already done this. Yes. Yes. Uh, yeah. I don't Can know. Also be international. I don't know someone actually for this now. Yeah. Okay. That's cool. Where can people find you? Um, uh, I think Instagram is the best, uh, and that's Niels at Niels Wunderdal. Uh, and I try to post uh, every week something. So yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Niels. Thank you. <laughs>